In this episode, I have my fellow Bravo expert Jordan van Dale as a guest. He published his first app using Bravo in August 2020 after winning Bravo's first contest. He will walk us through his process of creating the app and will also share some valuable tips. Let's get right into it. Why don't you introduce yourself? So my name is Jordan. I sort of graduated in work in organizational psychology, but I really quickly realized that there is very little creativity to be had in that field. So using the things I learned during that time in psychology, in business, in uh, research as well, I sort of noticed I was transitioning into digital, uh, digital design. So currently I'm a UX researcher at a company called We Are Reasonable People in Rotterdam. And I'm also a freelancer at Studio Hotpot, where I design and build websites and applications. So you started building an app with Bravo. And this is the app that we're going to be talking about today, We Plant. Could you mm -hmm. just walk me through how that all got started, how you maybe got the idea and how it went from there? I was doing a boot camp at the time when I discovered Bravo, and we were still very much working in uh, Sketch. And we just sort of got known about Figma. So that was a new tool. And I was just looking around for a way to actually build the application I had designed. Um, because I'm not a program, I'm a, I'm a sort of, you know, I design stuff, but I can't program. So any low code tool was interesting to me, but I just couldn't really find one that really ticked the boxes until one of my um, bootcamp colleagues sort of reached out to me and they're like, hey, you should check out Bravo. It's, uh, it looks pretty cool. And like I mentioned, I was just getting the hang of Figma and I saw that it linked up with Figma and I thought, okay, maybe this could work. So actually I tried out some different apps, but I, I just got really frustrated about the fact that they were so static, like you had to follow these specific rules. You can only put some content here and there. They were very, um, very specific, um, which really limits your creativity, basically. Uh, not to mention that their usability, like figuring out how these things work was terrible. Like I just couldn't figure it out. It was a really frustrating experience. So when Bravo said like, yeah, you just take your Figma design, put in some tags and you're good to go. I was like, I have to check this out. So that sort of got the ball rolling and uh, yeah, led me to actually explore Bravo more. We planned was built inside of this first contest, right? I had this idea that joining this contest would be a very good way of forcing myself to learn all of these tools in a really short period of time, basically. Um, and, you know, there was a reward for the number one place winner. So I was like, hey, you might as well try. Uh, so, yeah, that's sort of the reason why I got started with it. Um, Just because you didn't say that, you also won the first place. Um, uh -huh. But back to the way you started. Did you, you talked about having to force yourself through that learning process. How would you describe mm -hmm. the learning process? Like, was it easy to use or did you had to do a lot of um, yeah, research before you could get, get on? Um, it was actually relatively easy. Okay, it wasn't as, as advanced as it is now, of, of course. So there were some little hiccups uh, with things like connecting the backends, um, finding on which layer you, you made a uh, you made an error which sort of popped up in your Bravo interface. Uh, but these were like little things. I guess all the material that was provided at the time gave a really good idea of what was possible. And they gave you good guides on how to actually do these kind of things. So it wasn't it wasn't that hard at all, no. Which I shouldn't That's be, should, should probably not be telling because people will be, uh, will be going to Bravo and I'll lose my special position. But uh, yeah, basically anybody can use this. Would, how would you describe the process Bravo made since then? Because you said in the beginning there were some resources missing. How would you say Bravo developed itself? So um, I can talk a little bit about the process of building the application later, but um, actually one of the things I did in the process of building WePlant was actually include my girlfriend. Uh, I am pretty good at research. I'm pretty good at interaction design, but when it comes to visual, I could use a little bit of help and she's really good at this. So I invited her in and we were just brainstorming about this app. And one of the things that really frustrated her <laughs> was, yeah, I want to do this in the design. And I was like, yeah, we cannot do that. 
She's like, how about this? I'm like, yeah, we cannot do this. And it was, it was very, very much a, a basic tool in the beginning. And I think this is where Bravo has been taking big steps and that there are so many more features and things you can do at this point. Uh, I saw that recently they, they allowed these uh, maps to be included and stuff. So, you know, it's, 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 it's starting to get more and more than just a basic uh, informational app. Like you can do more stuff like the e-commerce or interactive blogs. Like this is the, the thing that I feel like they've really stepped up their game with. You already mentioned the process in building this application. Would you like mm -hmm. to go further into that? So you also designed with Figma. Yeah, basically XD wasn't supported back then, right? Yeah, that's okay, right. Okay, good. Um, you also made your template public. So the all of your app files can be downloaded from Figma. Mm -hmm. Would you like to walk through that Figma file? So people that maybe duplicated it can also understand what your thought process behind it was. Sure, sure. I, uh, it's been a while, but we can take a look. When we started out on this project, we got a database in Airtable and a bit of a theme. So before we actually started designing, we just sat down and thought about what are we actually going to be doing? And generally, I would actually do some research and talk to people who might be using this app, um, but there wasn't really any time. So luckily, I... I'm really bad at keeping plants alive. So I was a bit of a user myself. And we really wondered um, what would somebody who's just gotten into plants, um, a beginner basically, what would they need to actually uh, be able to keep these plants alive? Like how would they search for the plant that suits them? And that's sort of the basis of uh, what we've been trying to set up. So I'll first go over it in a nutshell and then I can uh, zoom in on some specific things. So we have the landing page, which is really aimed at getting somebody um, going with the app. So we have some very easy recommended categories if they want to get started, or we have a personalized way of figuring out what plant would be good for them. And of course, some important guides. Further along, we have some uh, categories where people can throw a scroll through, and I'll show those in a minute. We have the community section, and we have the help guide. So. Let me just look at these uh, one by one. First thing I'd like to mention, by the way, is that Bravo actually provides some templates. And here we see the app icon, which is basically just a field that they provided from Bravo to just put in your logo and it's done. So they have these little kind of hacks that help you really quickly set up a design. Here we have the home screen. And as you can see at the top of all of these screens, we have these little things between brackets. And this is where the magic of Bravo comes from. Um, but I'll look at those in a little bit. First off, we have a basic Figma design. So we just have everything that you would normally be designing. So you have the text boxes, you have the images. There's nothing really out of the ordinary here for anybody who's worked with Figma before. So if we really get into it and look at these things at top, this is what sort of um, helps you make this an actual app. First off, we have the top of the screen here, and it says it's the home page, and we have a status bar light, which means that the status bar with the battery and your um, cylinder reach is displayed in white. But we can also turn that to dark, I believe, and then turn it black. If we look at transition, that determines how you switch between pages. But this is all set a, at a uh, page level. It's pretty high. One of the things we've made in this app is a list. And there's different kinds of lists. So we've divided these into categories, which we believed um, most users or people who are just getting started with uh, plants would find useful. So for example, if there's somebody who doesn't really know what plant he wants in his room, but he knows that there is very little light, then there's a special category for this which automatically filters everything that we have in the database um, in Airtable and makes an easy selection for him. So basically, when you click one of these things, it automatically links you to the detail page of the plant. And what we've really tried to do is, in one simple overview, get an idea of what plant, kind of plant we're dealing with here. So this is some placeholder data, so it's not very specific for this plan, but we see that it's an intermediate plant which already tells us if we're using this app for the first time that maybe this is already out of reach, maybe we should look for an easy plant. 
but we can already tell it's a medium sized, uh, we should avoid direct sunlight and it's best for the bed and living room. So this kind of information is really aimed at giving them a very quick idea on whether this plan is gonna be suited for them or not. And if it is, then they have the opportunity to read more about this. So then we have information about the plan itself, more information about the lighting conditions. All of this detailed information is gonna be automatically filled in thanks to the connection with uh, Airtable. To make it even easier, we've included a bunch of videos for most of the plants, so they can even get somebody explaining uh, additional details and tips and tricks. So we thought this was a really nice setup uh, for sharing more information about these plants and making it easier for people to get started with this. Uh, another really cool feature that we had is a connection with Typeform. So we had this idea of creating a chat, like a, an AI chat, but of course it's not going to be AI, but a chat that sort of gives you specific advice. So this screen connects with a type form in which the user is asked a number of questions and type form sort of distills from that information. It goes down to a specific path to end up at one or two recommendations of plan that they should definitely check out in this app. And there's actually no limit to how far you can go with this. And, and I think type form is a really way, easy way to integrate this with um, Bravo. It's not, the, the fastest way, uh, but it's a really easy way because if you have a lot of plants, there's going to be a lot of different uh, decision trees within this type form, but it's definitely possible to go as far as you'd like. So another section of the app is the first aid. And this is something that we've added in because, well, we were new to this and we didn't know anything about it. There's so many little things that you have to consider when taking care of your plants and a lot more than we initially thought there would be. Now, instead of actually using the list and the detail page in this section, we've actually made this static. Uh, basically, because it was just easier for us to do the design at that time, uh, we really wanted to make this information easy to digest. So we had small chunks with easy headings so they could easily see when they open a guide, what are the topics that we're gonna be talking about and then easy short pieces with the most fundamental information. So they're not gonna be reading an entire book. At the time, there was no progress bars. So we simply use these static buttons and then we connect it. So it's basically going from one static page to the next, but we still kept in these little things at the bottom to indicate progress. So they knew where they were. And at the end, the option to, hey, if you wanna get more tips, then look it up uh, and redirect. So we didn't have a whole lot of time to work on this application. So I mostly spend time in the weekends, uh, sometimes in the evenings, just working on this. And what I really wanted is, or what I really tried to do is if I had a time, I wanted to integrate a community kind of feature. Um, they just published a, a piece about how to have others through Typeform upload stuff to your Airtable so it could actually be updated live in the app. And this was a really cool new feature and I really wanted to try it out. So I did find the time and I did set up this community thing. So here we have the overview. We just have a community section that's accessible from the home menu. And you can just click to write a post, which redirects you to the type form where you can upload your information. So this is the behind the scenes of the Airtable. And as you can see on the top, there's a number of tabs where we kept all the information about the different plants. So we have the animal friendly plants with the easy indoor plants. And we also have this community tab. And the interesting thing about this is that all the information in the community tab is sort of fed into it thanks to Typeform. So people could just input their username, input some text and add an image if they'd like and everything would end up here. Uh, which would automatically be pushed to the app for people to see. It's super positive. Like there's so many nice reactions, uh, both from people who are enthusiastic about plants. So they actually shared images of their plants and asked questions. Um, and there's just people who found out about We Plant through Bravo and just checked out the app and were amazed by it and wanted to try out this uh, community feature. What you don't see is all the reactions and things that I've taken out because there's no censoring. So there were some crazy things like Bernie Sanders pictures and, and all kinds of nonsense. Um, so yeah, occasionally you do have to check this if you use a setup like this, but overall it works really nicely. 
And I really look forward to having any kind of improvements on this from Bravo in the long run, because um, actually interacting and reacting on each other is still a little bit hard, but it definitely has potential if you want to start and build your first app. I think I can still remember at the time of the contest, I think like two days before the contest ended, they introduced the post requests, like when it was first possible, but yeah, of course, then nobody had the time for that anymore. Yeah, I do remember this was a very last minute thing we sort of managed to be able to put in. Do you still remember what your biggest challenges were in creating this app? Uh, yes. So I had the same problem as I have with another project I'm working on within Bravo, um, is working with the features that they provide you. Especially this first app was quite a challenge, as I mentioned. Uh, so many things that you want to do, um, but only so many things that you can do. So what I'd like to do is start out with this vision of what I would like my app to be in the long run. And then I just work towards an MVP, like a minimum viable product. So what is going to be the most essential features for this app? And how can we do this with the tools that we have? Um, so you don't always start out with an application that has everything that you want it to be able to do, but that also helps you to start easy and, and pretty much build the basis of what you want to do before you actually start including all of this other stuff. Because I suppose one of the dangers of that is that it might be a never ending project uh, because you just want it to be perfect, but it's never going to be perfect. Um, so yeah, that was probably one of the biggest challenges, just uh, figuring out what we could do and how we would solve some kind of issues. But what I really liked um, is the support that I also got from Bravo, uh, especially the community is very active and there was a lot of help there, even from the Bravo staff themselves uh, on occasion. So they were really nice. They, they always went out of their way to help out. I also noticed that some of the features, like you said, that weren't possible back at the time, you found workarounds. Do you have any tips? Like for example, the slider, when you wanted to have an indicator for the slider, you did that with static pages. Or for example, um, no forms were allowed, so you use type form. Do you have mm -hmm. any tips on how you can find such workarounds if a feature is not supported yet? Mm, that's a good one. It really depends on the kind of problem you're running into. Uh, but I guess the first thing I would do is check out the forum, like I mentioned. There's a lot of support there. And there's actually people there who are very clever, like you, who have certain tricks to make stuff happen magically uh, in and around Bravo. So you're not only limited to Bravo, but like there's a lot of backend tools that might provide you with additional functionalities that plug into Bravo that help you get the more advanced stuff. Um, if you do want to find a simpler workaround, like for example, the, the progress bars that I used, um, a good way is just to go, for example, dribble.com and just look at inspiration of other people, find out how they solved particular issues um, and just go from there. Do you still remember how long it took you to finish the whole app from beginning, like from the like maybe how long you took to plan the app and then also how to how long it took to implement it? It was mostly something that I did uh, in my spare time. So with it just being an hour here and there, you don't really pay attention to how long the entire project took. But if I could publish this entire app in a month, in my free time, then anybody dedicated and who has like a week of holiday should be able to build his own app and launch it in that time as well. If people like the project that you just presented, how could they reach out to you? So they can find more information about me at studiohotpot.nl. Basically, we design things, which is mostly digital things like websites and applications, but we also do flyers, uh, banners, a lot of marketing related things. And one of the strengths that we have is we approach this from a very psychological point of view. So think of neuromarketing, uh, gamification, um, user experience, of course, uh, but really try to think about who we're designing for with what goal. And yeah, that's why we can offer a lot of the different things, a lot of different uh, products. But the final important thing is after we deliver, we actually support to make sure that whatever we did deliver turns out to work the way people want. And if not, we can follow up and fix it. Please leave feedback on how you like this type of videos in the comments. And if you've created a Bravo app yourself, feel free to reach out to me. All use cases and sizes are welcome. Thank you for watching and I'll see you for a new episode of Build It With Jonas next Tuesday. Bye.